And what does Putin's response tell us? I mean, a lot of people are saying, oh, this is, you know, the walls are closing in. It's finally all. Basically, I feel like this becomes like a Rorschach test where everyone who wants Putin removed says this is proof that he's on his way out. Everyone who likes Putin says, oh, this is proof that he's strong because look at how he handled it. I've seen people say stronger than ever. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? This is just his genius moves to like, you know, clear the, get the filth out of the military structure. It's like his genius moves. I I mean, you tell me what you think, Yash. I don't care what you think. I don't think he's going anywhere anytime soon. I do think that, I do think that what happens is, I mean, we're, we're seeing, you know, I mean, that the, there are, uh, I don't know, the effects of this war. I mean, it was a brutal war and it's changing the po- political dynamics in some kind of way and it's empowering, pretty making pretty clear, making some people in Russia who are sort of part of these patriotic, you know, military organizations, part of these like, almost like, you know, they're connected to, to veterans, connected to soldiers at the front. They're, they're being empowered and they feel their power. And the fact that Prigozhin can think that he can just sort of do this kind of thing. M- makes me think that you know there are these huge sectors of 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 this um, this newly emerged war machine right there's like that that really are feeling their power and feel that they're important and feel that they need to be given a voice and, and need to be heard by putin directly you know and and so i i do think it's it's just showing that the war is changing the nature of the russian society and and the sort of n- n- whatever the internal political processes and, gr- and groupings and things like that you know the russian deep state However, however, it's sort of changing it. It, it, It's, 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 I don't think this is like a superficial thing. Yeah, I mean, I think what, you know, you have to assume the thing, the critiques that Prigozhin was saying, he wasn't getting them from Ann Applebaum or something, you know, Mm. he was getting them from rank and you have to assume because he's trying to appeal to the common soldier and, and to basically people below the top, top brass. He's that, that these, these complaints have been aired out between soldiers, between yes. soldiers and officers, you know, and his world that he's in all the time. Everybody always complains anyway, in you know, in any situation, in a corporation, in any war, whenever you read any war books and memoirs, you know, about soldiers. But like, those are pretty serious complaints. Um, and it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that they, that their, that morale is about to collapse. That's how somebody might want to interpret it. Um, it, but it does mean that those complaints are there and real, and they could be instrumentalized too. Um, okay. And they're based on real grievances. I mean, yep. you know, as Yasha said, like there's a lot of truth. He's like the least, you know, credible person right. to air out those grievances, but they're real grievances. And he's he's basically using other people's grievances, not Ann Applebaum's and the blobs, but rank and file Russians. And I think just Russians in general, you know, because what yeah. his, his critique of, of Putin, of the, of the, of the system of government and the system of government governance that Putin created, you know, his critique of it is that most of these government officials, they just use whatever chances they get to enrich themselves at the expense of the state expense of you know, common soldiers, the expense of, you know, common Russian people. This is like, it's a, it, this critique lands. I mean, you can just read sort of YouTube sections, you know, in the comments, whenever you, mm. whenever you want to get a sense of what Russians think, you know, you go to the YouTube, you, know, you go to YouTube comments. Yeah. This is what my, my wife, uh, Zhenya always does. And it's, it's true. Like, you, John you, you, always you, goes to Yahoo comments for what Americans think. And yeah, yeah. you go to YouTube comments for what Yeah, Russians and it's like, think. and that's, yeah. he's basically kind yeah. of voicing exactly what they're saying. And, you know, and yeah. again, and, and so what's changed now, I think is, you know, people have gotten a bit more patriotic in Russia. I mean, there's a, that's a bit, it's a, it's a strain that's submerged in a much bigger way recently and he's critiquing Putin from a you know from a ultra patriotic kind of ultra nationalistic um pro war perspective and he's just saying that the elite that you put in power that you support are fucking this up our boys are dying you're you're turning you know you're turning um you know uh, you you just you you're putting them to a meat grinder and this is your fault and like and so he might you know these are these are i think crit- criticisms that land very strongly and you can almost see it it's like it's weird you know when when putin did this emergency meeting just yesterday and you know sort of his security council national security council they all kind of filed in looking really grim and really depressed shaigu you know um sergey shaigu who is the like the main target of prigozhin's attack, attack he looks so beaten down mm. so depressed it's Exhausted. kind of shocking yeah. because also like i don't know like to call to, for for prigozhin to call out should i go that directly mm-hmm. i mean he he went like personally he said he called him a baba which is like you know he called him like a 
a woman basically, which is mm. like, you know, you know, in the, in this hyper masculine world that mm. they exhibit, not, you know, a, compliment. You get, not mm. a compliment. And he's basically just calling him out. I mean, this is like, these are, you either answer those words with like directly and you basically have to fight and, and you have to, if they answer them with violence, you know, or with some kind of response, or you're just a, you're just uh, like, that's it. You're over, you know, like mm-hmm. you have no respect among, you know, you will have no respect from anybody in that world anymore. It's pretty intense. Like, yeah. and I, and I, so I just think that Prigozhin, you know, I mean, he, I hope he has some really, you know, powerful, you know, backers behind him, whoever stands behind him, because I mean, he's Lukashenko. Over. Lukashenko, uh, Lukashenko better have <laughs> like a nice, his life to Putin. You he know, should have like a nice villa thing. with a lot of, with, with a lot of, uh, you know, guards, you know, big walls, yeah. high walls. He needs yes. really high walls uh, well, in his villa where he's been living in. So yeah, it's pretty shocking. Yeah. I, I thought, I saw an interesting take. It comes from, I'm sure I'll mispronounce this, Yuri she- Shelyazhenko, who is the executive secretary of Ukrainian, of the Ukrainian pacifist movement. And he actually said that the main lesson of the Wagner mutiny is that Russian militarists, including even war criminals like Putin and Prigozhin, are capable of negotiating and stopping bloodshed. (laughs) This is an additional argument why it is not only necessary for humanitarian reasons, but also must be possible to cease fire in Ukraine and start peace talks, (laughs) not prolong the war for multiple decades. That's pretty funny. I, I mean, like, I, I, think, I think I think the reason they're saying that is because um, idiots like uh, McFa- like this whole uh, the blob, right. which r- wants to constantly escalate and pour more weapons in. And they're, th- you know, they'll take anything that happened. Let's say Putin dropped a nuke. They would say that proves that we should right. escalate and that he's too cowardly to drop two nukes. So right. we have no, you know what I mean? So what they've said is the lesson of this is clearly that when you challenge Putin, he backs down contra what everybody else is saying about escalating being a problem and that he'll he'll escalate back. So everybody's, I think, kind of drawing wrong lessons, you know, from but this. But doesn't it you know? show that like whatever the problems, with, I mean, you guys are very critical of Putin, obviously. And, but you're also aware of like, you, you call bullshit on all sides, basically, right? So Putin is not, the Hitler, right? No, that the no, Western no, no, media presents true. him as. I, so I, does this is, not show that there's the ability for negotiation? I don't think this necessarily is what shows that there's a yeah. possibility to negotiate. I think there is a possibility to negotiate. Okay. There always should be, and no one wants to. I don't think this has really no, much I to don't do with it. <laughs> Putin was just. Well, I guess put, he didn't. He didn't like mow them down because it would be bad for him. Bad pop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, put, and that's the thing about negotiating with with Putin and most powerful countries and people it has to be in their interests you know like you have to be it's not like he's not like hitler who was on a suicide mission to blow you know despite what the blob said yeah 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 yeah. he's but he's he's not like a nice guy obviously either and i i just think this just showed how 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 you know practical he still can be but he was put new he was put in a really bad situation actually if anything what it shows is very typical of putin that he does, he has a long history of this, of not getting involved, allowing his elites, I mean, ministers, mm. so called oligarchs. I think, you know, talked about, I hate that word oligarch because oligarchs have political power and Russia's billionaires don't, but whatever. Right. We, we call them the oligarch. oligarchs. Yeah, we right. have oligarchs, they don't, but whatever. They have court billionaires or, or billionaires. Um, but he lets them fight savagely and doesn't get involved and generally tends not to get involved, really, unless. He absolutely has to. And sometimes, you know, you can see why, because not a lot's to be gained in general when you're the boss like that. But once in a while, you can let it get way too out of hand. And then it's a much bigger problem than if you had dealt with it earlier. And so if anything, this shows, you know, this shows, I don't know, that that he's, uh, I, and I think the, the Patriots are really pissed at him for this. It shows that he's a bit of a weaker yeah. leader than he used to it's, be. You it's know? actually kind of if you uh, he just released uh, you know uh, yesterday right um, or this morning even the this five minute address kind of you know concluding the, yeah. the, this this scandal and he praises um, commanders of the Wagner Group and soldiers of the Wagner Group who took mm-hmm. part in this in this you know attempted coup or whatever mutiny or march for for justice. Um, he praises them as as patriots, as as men who fought bravely uh, to defend Russia, um, and he just says that you know he was. I understand that you were misled. I mean, so he actually, it's a very strange. He does look weaker. I mean, look, but Putin is is crafty, and 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 so yeah. I would say that my, my guess would be it does make him look weaker, and it probably it doesn't help 
his power or, you know, his, the, the way that people perceive him because, but I guarantee you that he's just, he wants to regulate this now and end it now exactly. and he's going to whack everybody later. It's just, it's the way exactly. that, so I don't think that, you know, I'm sorry, I, I do, I'm glad that there is a Ukrainian sort of organization of pacifists out there, you which know, is me too. pretty surprising God, to me, you know? I know. Pretty surprising. It must but be I don't dangerous think, for them. To be I don't, I don't think yeah. exactly. They probably yeah. don't exist in, in Ukraine at this point. Yeah. But uh, but you know, I don't think that you can take this very internal intra you know intra intra Russia um, conflict you know intra elite conflict and extrapolate it to a much larger you know war between these kind of blocks, economic blocks. Um, you know, and so and I and I. It's, of course, it's possible probably to negotiate, but I don't know. I'm not sure what it would take to bring Russia or Putin to the negotiating table right now. It doesn't seem like he's all too. He's not calling for negotiations, you know. You, or you know Zelensky, what I mean? for that matter. Yeah, I, I so, mean, it's there's. So. They, but you know, but the. I mean, I am personally very much in favor of. I mean, a lot of times in the past when I was younger, I just said people don't seem to do much diplomacy anymore. It Man. seems like yeah. it's people tweet know, everybody's a lot, lazy. You know? Yeah, I know they don't have time. People but like to like, flame you know, each other on Twitter, you know, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's and the that's only fun. thing. Yeah. But like, um, I, it, it I, seems like you, you often start with two people, two sides that have absolutely nothing to negotiate about. You open up dialogues and, you know, you, you keep at it until, until yeah. you can maybe get something and maybe you can't. And there's, there's nothing like that as far as we can tell, aside yeah. from back channel stuff, perhaps through the Chinese or Qatar or something, you know, who knows? Well, well you, yeah. have to, you have to either people who are willing to do it or people who are forced into, you know, into and cornered into negotiating, right? And have no uh, really other way out. And it doesn't seem like it's, you know, the, the positions of both Russia and Ukraine have not reached that point, you know, where one of them says, okay, I can't, you know, we can't, for whatever reasons, we can't. Well, side, this. Both sides are waiting for the other side to be in that yeah, and position. Said, and well, so well, is well, NATO for that matter, is waiting for Putin to yeah. be in that position. And exactly. so it's just, and, and a, so nobody is talking like, well, we'll wait till they get in this point that we want them to be at. Then we'll talk. And it's like, you know, oh. tens of thousands dead later, and we're no yeah. closer to that point. So, 